Take Apart the iPod 3rd Gen Nano by MacRecycling.com The following tools are required. A small Phillips head screwdriver, a plastic pick or Apple plastic tool, a black stick, a very small flathead screwdriver, and a properly grounded wrist strap to protect against damage by electrostatic discharge. To begin, insert a thin plastic pick in the seam between the front and back cover of the Nano. Do not use a metal tool as you will scratch the Nano. Work the pick completely around the Nano using additional picks to help keep the seam open. Take care not to accidentally press the covers together once they are apart. You may find it helpful to insert one or more picks in the seam along the bottom of the Nano as shown here. It takes a bit of patience, but the cases will eventually separate. You may find it easier to focus on the right side of the Nano to first free the two clips shown here. Once the back cover is off, remove the three screws on the right side of the Nano shown here. Make note of the location they were removed from as there are different sizes of screws. Then remove the three screws on the left indicated here. Again, make note of the location from where they were removed so they can be returned to their proper location later. Notice the thin metallic strip shown here. Notice the thin ribbon cable and its connector shown here. The tan plastic part is very fragile and is easily broken, so take care when removing it in just a few minutes. The screws just removed are shown here, next to their proper locations. Note the screw at top left has a broader head than the others. These are the six screws just removed, beginning with the one on the left from the top left of the Nano and continuing around the bottom of the Nano up to the top right. Using a short black stick, very gently lift up on the tan piece of plastic like so, carefully lifting it toward the right side as indicated here. Notice the tan piece of plastic remains attached. Do not remove it from the connector. Once the tan piece of plastic is in an upright position, use a black stick to gently remove it from the connector like so. This is a close-up of the connector just loosened. Notice how the light tan plastic piece pivots in the connector. Remove the thin metallic piece on the left as shown here, using a black stick to lift it up. It fits snugly, so it might be necessary to lift up on the headphone jack. Be sure to note the orientation of the metallic piece so it can be correctly reinstalled later. Carefully lift up slightly at the top of the battery and gently pull the battery and logic board assembly slightly toward the top to pull the USB connector clear of the front cover as shown here. You will notice a cable attaches the display to the logic board, so be careful not to damage it. Notice the connector shown here is larger than the first connector, but secures the cable in the same way. Pry up the cable connector as shown here, taking care not to damage it, and gently remove the cable as shown. This is a close-up of the connector just loosened. Notice the plastic piece pivots just like the smaller one loosened earlier. The display has two plastic pins shown here that fit into corresponding holes in the front cover. The display is secured to the front cover with adhesive around the perimeter. The two holes shown here are where the display assembly pins fit. To remove the display, use a black stick to gently pry the display up and away like so. 
the display can now be lifted up and away. And these are the pins on the display. Here is a close-up of the plastic pins.